This is great. There you go. One thing that we seem to do, I guess, about every 10 years is we decide, well, it's time to reinvent ourselves. It's time to like do something totally different. When we lived in Dallas, in Texas, you know, we had the big house and the big car and the big job and the big, we needed all that kind of stuff. And then after a while, we, looked, we were like, uh, there's got to be more to life than just this. This area is kind of like the epicenter of fire lookouts and at one time there were hundreds and hundreds of them and over the years as they've gone into disrepair the forest service has had to either tear them down because they were concerned about them and there are very few that are left. They built these things on outcroppings of rock or on top of, of hills so that you had a 360 degree view so that whoever was staffing it could actually see if any fires and then they would be able to report them down. We found the piece of land. It took us four or five years of camping here to uh, kind of figure out exactly where we wanted to look out to get the infrastructure ready. And then, you know, for us to find the architect and the engineer and to find the builder, we finally got all that together and it was just gonna be a weekend getaway. And then those two-day weekends started turning into three-day weekends, and then they started turning into four-day weekends. Before we knew it, we were starting to think like, what would it be like to actually live there year-round? So the tower uh, from the ground up to the deck is 40 feet high. The main level room is 18 by 18. It has a cupola that is eight by eight. Eight by eight, yeah. it's a cube. In a historic fire lookout, those were not used as sleeping lofts, they were used as where they would watch for the fires. So we have a quarter section, which is 160 acres total. The meadow is only 40 of that. And it, slips off to the west and the south and then for the most part we're surrounded by the national forest. I often say off-grid is not what it used to be because we have cell phone service and we have internet and we have lights. We have solar that pumps water up here so we have running water so it's it's not near as primitive as it may sound. The saying that we love to tell each other is just because we live off-grid doesn't mean we have to eat bad food and we have made some amazing meals. The whole idea of being able to bring fresh produce, get really good stuff here, make it really well here, we've got all the stuff that we need to do that with, and it, it, it's just fun. Building together and doing things together we're learning how to um, dance around disagreement. At the beginning of that whole thing, it was like, no, 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 you, you, know, you don't know what you're doing. Well, neither, none of us knew what we were doing, so we had to learn together. We have changed, and we are different than we were then, and we're, we give each other permission to be different. had people say to me, you know, how can you live in 388 square feet? I don't think of the space that I live in as just being the four walls here. All of this, the deck out front is an extension of the living room and the meadow out there is an extension of the room and the garden is an extension of the kitchen. So I, I actually feel like it's the biggest space I've ever lived in in that respect. I've been working on the idea of a home all my life. and. It, it isn't really a place. That's the thing I finally realized. And you find expression for your home in lots of different ways. The space is, is really small compared to everything else we've lived in. And it keeps getting smaller as we go. Because it's not that. It's really about the experience of being together and doing things together, of enjoying the moment, um, and not 
not really about the the appointments. All right. Toast me. Toast you? Ding. <laughs>